Hello, I'm Dr. Karen with Embrace Life Ohm and Mother Core, and today I'm going to be talking about red light and near infrared light therapy. This video is part of a continuing series on light and your health, and to understand today's video better, we recommend that you also watch the introduction to our series and part three on the hidden hazards of energy efficient light bulbs. In today's show, I'm going to be bringing out specific products and books. These are products that I personally found to be helpful, but I don't have any personal attachment to them. That is, if you buy them, I don't make any money. I'm sure there are also a number of other good products on the market, and I urge you to explore the market yourself. There's actually a very long history of using different colored lights to treat medical conditions that goes back to ancient times. But the modern focus on using red and infrared lights therapeutically goes back to the 1960s when it was discovered with laboratory animals that treating them with the newly discovered red lasers could cause their hair to grow back more quickly. Since then, there's been thousands of laboratory trials showing that when using red and infrared light at the proper frequencies and at the proper dosages can cause tissue regeneration, reduction of inflammation, relaxation of smooth muscle, and improved circulation. As a result, these lights can be used to treat a lot of different medical conditions, including depression and Alzheimer's, which are related to inflammation in the brain, obesity, healing of wounds, treatment of arthritis and other causes of joint and back pain, and even treatment of thyroid conditions. And we'll be providing some websites with this post so you can look at the whole host of conditions that can be treated with this light therapy. So as scientists empirically observed the healing effects of red and near infrared light, they sought for a physical explanation. The current understanding is that there are multiple ways in which red and near infrared light interact with the body but that one of the most important mechanisms is via interaction with cytochrome C oxidase. Cytochrome C oxidase is an important enzyme which is located in the wall of the mitochondria. The mitochondria are tiny organelles that are found in every cell in our body and that are responsible for producing ATP the molecule that is used by energy for every cell in our body and that is also used for intracellular messaging. The mitochondria work by combining the energy from the food that we eat with the oxygen that we breathe. Cytochrome C oxidase has a critical role in bringing oxygen into the equation. So certain poisons that kill us, such as cyanide and carbon monoxide, actually work by blocking cytochrome C oxidase and thus preventing the body from using oxygen. To understand how red and near infrared light impacts cytochrome C oxidase, we need to understand the concept of chromophores. Chromophores are regions in proteins which are very good at absorbing light of particular wavelengths. When the chromophores are hit by light of those wavelengths, they absorb the light's energy causing a change in the geometry of the entire protein and causing that protein to reach a higher energy state. Cytochrome C oxidase has multiple chromophores that absorb energy at the wavelengths of 620 and 680 nanometers, which is in the range of visible red light, which goes from about 600 to 700 nanometers, and also chromophores which absorb light at 760 and 825 nanometers, which is in the range of near infrared light, which stretches from 700 to over 1000 nanometers. So when the cell is hit by these frequencies or light near these frequencies, cytochrome C oxidase is energized. In this energized state, it uses more oxygen and creates more energy for use by the mitochondria. The mitochondria uses this energy to make more ATP. So the red and infrared light at the proper dosage creates more ATP for your cells to use to do their business. In addition, as more oxygen is used, there is the creation of more ROS or reactive oxygen species. We talk more about ROS in part three, but in summary, when ROS is present in small and manageable numbers, it can be very useful to the cell. 
the ROS that is produced in particular under the irradiance of the proper amounts of red and near-infrared light causes certain transcriptions of DNA that causes the cell to create more proteins than it needs both for cellular regeneration and for cellular protection. For, so we get a specific turning on of cellular programs that help the cell to heal and protect itself. Scientists think that it isn't an accident that red and infrared light causes our bodies to turn on genes that cause protection and repair. Because for most life on this planet, red and near-infrared light is only received from the sun. And at the same time, the sun is producing UV, blue, and violet light. As we talked about more in part three, UV, blue, and violet light are very important for our body's health. However, they are high frequency, high energy lights that also do damage to our body's cells. Thus, the body is brilliantly designed to use the energy from the lower frequency red and infrared light to do repair from the higher energy light that is hitting it at the same time from the sun's rays. So the most inexpensive way of doing red and near infrared light therapy at home is by using the sun. You can go out in the early morning or late afternoon, basically any time when your shadow is taller than yourself, because at these times a larger proportion of the sunlight is in the red or near infrared range. If you need a larger amount of red and near infrared, you can build yourself a little tent covered with red cloth and put that in direct sunlight in the middle of the day. But you may live someplace without good sun, or you may be spending a lot of time indoors under energy efficient light bulbs. As we talked about in part three, the big problem with these light bulbs is that they provide a bunch of short wavelength violet and blue light without providing the balancing red and near infrared. In this case, you may want to do electric red and infrared therapy inside your home. There are a number of different devices on the market which are designed to do red and near infrared light therapy at home or in the office of a medical practitioner. At the high end, there are laser devices which are very specifically tuned to frequencies and dosages. At the next level, there are LED devices which are mostly designed for home use. This is an example of an LED device and this one has all of the four frequencies which target cytochrome C oxidase. There are also other devices you can get with two or one of these frequencies. Now the lowest end you can get is simply an incandescent light bulb with a red color on it. So now I want to talk about the trade-offs between LED and the incandescent. In part three of this series, we talked about the LED light being a problem. Now that's for two reasons. One is that the white LED produces a lot of blue light without balancing that with the red and infrared. Obviously this is a red and infrared LED, so we don't have that particular problem. However, we also talked about the fact that LED lights do produce some dirty electricity. That will still be a problem with this LED. However, the benefits of this LED is that it's tuned to the specific frequencies that are bioactive. That allows you to use the light for less time and to not produce very much heat on your skin. And it's felt that producing excessive heat on your skin could undo some of the effects of the red light and infrared light therapy. The incandescent light won't have the problem with the dirty electricity and it will still produce the wavelengths that you need for the therapy to be effective. However, the incandescent light is also producing light at many wavelengths that are not very bioactive. Therefore, you need to use the incandescent light for a longer period of time. And if you're in a hot climate and your skin is getting too hot, you might need to use water or a fan to make sure that you're not overheating during the therapy. Now, if you're using sunlight to get your infrared therapy, you're not going to overdose. But if you're using electric lights to do it, you could have an overdose problem. Remember that we said when you do red and infrared light therapy, you increase your cellular production of ROS. At low levels, this is a good thing. However, if the ROS is produced too much, you are gonna start putting oxidative stress on the cells, and this has the opposite effect of healing them. 
So it has been found in the laboratory that overdosing on electric red and infrared light therapy will start to hurt the cells rather than heal them. To get your dosage right, please watch our accompanying video on dosing red and infrared light. Thank you so much for watching today's show.